So Mike Maloney, you know, to keep the silver theme, Eric Sprott talked about, you know, north of $50 silver. Last night, you know, Ross Beatty looked into the crystal ball holding his trophy and he said $50 silver by 2020. Uh, Frank said $80 or $70 silver. You know, when are things going to turn around? Because you were at a Casey conference a few years ago and everyone was bullish. When is Eric Sprock going to be right? Uh, you know, uh, I was asked when earlier, and, and the, these are tough things to call as the when. But the inevitability of triple digit silver is there. I mean, like I said in my presentation, what bull market ends with uh, uh, the asset not exceeding its high from the previous bull market 35 years ago? That just isn't the way it happens. But it happened um, 35 years later. That's what I'm worried about. So could it well, be? Well, 35 years later, it came close to its previous high, and it's doing a pullback. And I think the pullback will be even more severe. Some people think the bottom is in. I think that we could see like $7 silver. Oh, it's wow. an entirely a possible thing. I think we're going into a deflation first, and that will take gold and silver down with uh, other assets as the real estate bubble, the uh, stock market bubble, and the bond bubble. bubble all, you know, the first crash we had was stocks. The second crash was stocks and real estate. This one's going to be stocks, real estate, and bonds. And so it's going to be more severe than the crisis of 08. And uh, I believe that gold and silver will go down for a little while. And to me, that is the gift from God. It's your last opportunity to accumulate silver before all these Keynesians. Uh, if you look at the response to the last crisis, you know, uh, Switzerland has 10 times the base money than they did before the crisis. Uh, we are, uh, our base money supply is five times what it was before the crisis. They added 400%. Uh, they're going to print until deflation gives way. And uh, then uh, triple digit or, you know, if you, <clears throat> it's, I don't know what's going to happen, but there's a wide range of possibilities. <clears throat> and if you had asked anybody, uh, if uh, Bernanke would quadruple, you know, or actually, if he would, if we he would make the currency supply of base money five times larger in response to a market crash, everybody would have considered that insane, that that wasn't within the realm of possibilities. And here we are with negative interest rates. If you would have talked to anybody just five years ago or ten years ago about negative interest rates, they'd say what? Because <laughs> It had never happened in all, all of history. This is the first time. So their response, you know, they're out of bullets, basically. What do they do next time? But are they, they out of bullets? Yeah, I don't believe they are. You know, quantum mechanics, for years you grew up saying you can't take a square root of a negative number. Then you take 30-year quantum mechanics, you're like, what? There's an imaginary variable? Holy shit. And then they rewrites the laws. So my theory is, is why can't they just rewrite stuff? Invent new vehicles, kick the can down the road. Why can't they? Well, we'll see if it works. They'll try. Okay. I'll answer that, Marin. Grant? I think, I think one of the reasons for that is because it's a, it's a credibility issue, right? Because anything they do... Oh, come on. If, if we all know they have no credibility as it right, is. Right, but no, we do. We do. But that's the only thing holding this thing together right now is there is a degree of credibility that these guys have this thing under control. That's why they're so desperate to raise interest rates because that completes the facade that this thing is recovering. I mean... If you think about it, if, you, if, you, if the world at large figured out that these guys don't have a clue what they're doing and they're playing defense every single day of their lives, what would you do? Right? You wouldn't do what you're doing now. You wouldn't be buying equities. You wouldn't be buying bonds. You'd have your money in the mattress. You'd have it in the bank. And they're trying to get ahead of that and stop you doing that by having negative interest rates and all this talk about banning cash. I mean, this is what they're going to have to do. This is a credibility issue, pure and simple.